Hello, I am Dr. Dina Gonzalez, Gonzaga University's Provost, and it is my privilege to welcome you all to the University's 127th Commencement. On behalf of the University, thank you to our graduates and their families and friends for joining us for a public celebration of our students' achievements. We have more than 1,250 graduating seniors and over 800 masters, law, and doctoral students to honor this weekend. Your support has aided these graduates as they work to complete this step of their educational journeys. This is indeed a day to celebrate, not only for our graduates, but for all of us. We begin our program today in honor of the Native ancestors who walk this earth across many generations. The honoring will be followed by an invocation and then the singing of our national anthem. I am pleased to welcome Wendy Thompson, Director of Tribal Relations, for a land acknowledgement. In the spirit of the Jesuit practice of composition of place, we acknowledge that Gonzaga University resides on the homelands of the Spokane tribal people. This land holds the cultural DNA and the spirit of the first people of this place, the people of the river. It is their ancestors who are here and bring forth the power of this place, the knowledge that comes from the land. We are grateful to be on this land and ask for its support as we work to manifest our intentions during this gathering of hearts, minds, and spirits. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. It is now my pleasure to introduce Father Brian Pham of the Society of Jesus. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for our graduates who have successfully completed their education here at Gonzaga University. As they move on to the next stage of their lives, we ask your blessings be upon them. In the spirit of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, we pray that our graduates may always be professional, competent, and compassionate, loyal to their promises, and responsive to the world's need for social justice. May they be the voice for the voiceless. We pray that you give our graduates the inner strength, compassion, and conviction needed to freely and responsibly make difficult and challenging decisions. May they understand and apply their knowledge creatively and with integrity. And may they employ these skills in a critical and proactive manner. May our graduates understand that the option for justice and solidarity with and for others implies the rejections of violence, vengeance, and intolerance as much as the rejection of any kind of discrimination or division that dehumanizes our human family. As our graduates move into the next chapter of their journey, may they always be the embodiment of the spirits of gratitude, hope, and joy. And in the spirit of St. Ignatius of Loyola, may our graduates become men and women for and with others, thus transforming the world with a passion and faith that does justice. We bring these prayers to you, trusting in the love and mercy that you have given us. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Thank you, Father Pham, for the invocation. And thank you to Gonzaga's a cappella group, The Big Bing Theory, for leading us in the Star Spangled Banner. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Thane McCullough, Gonzaga University's 26th president. His academic discipline is psychology. He received his bachelor's degree from Gonzaga University and his Doctor of Philosophy degree from Oxford University. President McCullough has served Gonzaga University in numerous positions over his three decades of professional engagement with the university. A nationally recognized leader in Jesuit higher education, Dr. McCullough brings to the role of president extensive knowledge and skill and a passionate commitment to the mission of educating whole persons while exploring opportunities in Jesuit, Catholic, and humanistic traditions, including linking social justice with equity and accessibility. Please join me in welcoming Gonzaga University President, Dr. Thane McCullough. Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. Dina Gonzalez, our distinguished honoree and speaker, Fawn Sharp, President, Quinault Indian Nation, members of the faculty, administrators, distinguished family members, and honored guests, and most especially, graduating members of the class of 2020. What a privilege it is to be with you as we together celebrate your momentous achievement. I believe I can speak for us all when I say that the completion of the 2019-2020 academic year was not what any of us anticipated. It broke our hearts to have to announce that all of you must return to your homes and finish out your senior year away from each other and the campus that you called home. But just as you always have, you exemplified what it means to be a Zag, taking on the seemingly insurmountable challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic with understanding and with grace. I wanna say on behalf of all of us here at Gonzaga University, thank you for your willingness and dedication to finish out your career as Gonzaga students with such fortitude. It was nothing short of extraordinary to witness firsthand how tremendously courageous you all were in the face of circumstances that none of us have ever been witness to before. You were and have been shining examples of what Jesuit, Catholic, and humanistic education is all about. Educating students for lives of leadership and service to the common good even in the midst of crisis. Even from the first day you stepped foot on Gonzaga's campus, I can imagine in some small way that you envisioned what this moment of commencement would be like. Crossing the stage, smiling proudly for photos, gathering with family and friends to celebrate this tremendous achievement. Even though we cannot gather together as we have in years past, I do hope that today's remote ceremony still brings you the feelings of nostalgia from your time at Gonzaga as well as pride for what you and your classmates have achieved as Zags. On this special day for all of us, we must take a moment to thank those who have played important roles in our lives. Traditionally, our commencement is held on Mother's Day, a day we celebrate intentionally those who are or who have been mom for us. I want to recognize all of the parents, caregivers, and supportive family members out there 
and express our continued gratitude for all that you have done for these wonderful graduates. Sags, do you remember that first weekend when we were all gathered together in the kennel for new student orientation? Can you remember back to those first few days moving in and unpacking? The first few days of class? And then, boom, in a flash, here we are. Isn't it weird how in the middle of big and important and even torturous projects, time can seemingly drag on forever, but when you're done, or nearly done, you look back and you're left wondering, how did it go by so fast? For a long time now, really for years, the completion of your degree has been the focus, the objective, the horizon. And suddenly, quite suddenly, it will become the backdrop against which you must set for yourselves a new horizon. In the words of a longtime friend and former campus minister, we find ourselves quite immediately at a corner, a unique place where one can simultaneously look backwards along the path we have been traveling and forwards too, towards the future. But to move forward, we are obligated to change our direction, the trajectory of our journey. You, distinct from all others who have graduated from universities this year, you are the graduates of Gonzaga University's class of 2020. Your intellectual gifts, your meaningful accomplishments, the knowledge, skills, and habits of heart and mind you have absorbed, these have earned you the credentials that this day we honor. But as you may have heard, there's no such thing as a free credential. The credentials you have earned come with strings attached. You are prepared through all the experiences you have had while at Gonzaga to go out and make this world a better and more decent place. To bring together all of your wisdom and all of your experiences to lead lives of integrity, to use your imagination and your influence to repair brokenness in your communities, in your relationships, and in our world. To rely on your remarkable voices to speak on behalf of those whose voice goes unheard to invest in and allow your faith to be a light shining in the darkness for those who have lost their way. And most of all, to use the power of your imagination to not only dream new realities into being, but, and this is a weighty responsibility, to inspire others to dream as well. Even though you have now left Gonzaga, let me share one more hope I have for you. Stay connected to us and stay connected to each other. When I was a student, phones were still connected to the wall by springy wires. If you lost that phone number, you are out of luck. But today, you can text, Snapchat, Insta, Facebook, WhatsApp, DM, PM, Signal, TikTok, and tweet at each other, and including me, at Gonzaga underscore Prez. You have many ways of keeping connected with one another. And it matters because you never know when along the journey you might need a place to crash for the night or to borrow some money 
or to be one person singularly essential to help a friend through a dark or difficult time. And rest assured, you can count on the fact that I and the Alumni Association will work hard at keeping you connected to Gonzaga. You have been a gift to us. You inspire us. And we are grateful to have been with you on this part of your journey. May God's grace be with you now and always. Congratulations to the class of 2020. The university confers honors on students who have demonstrated the highest academic achievement through two awards. Our first, the Garrigan Award, is a gift of the university in memory of Father William Garrigan of the Society of Jesus, bestowed upon the member of the Class of 2020 who has maintained the highest scholastic record during four years at Gonzaga. This year's awardee is Brian Robert Bowers. Brian is achieving a Bachelor of Business Administration, summa cum laude, with concentrations in finance and product management, as well as a minor in entrepreneurial leadership. He was also awarded the Business Excellence Award this year. Favorite highlights from Brian's time at Gonzaga include inspiring our fall 2019 freshman as the academic convocation speaker and watching the Zags defeat North Carolina in the kennel. Coming from deep Gonzaga roots, both of Brian's parents and several other family members are alumni. Brian recently began working as a management consultant. Congratulations, Brian. The Senior Class Award is a gift of the university to the member of the Class of 2020, who has maintained the highest scholastic record during the senior year. This year's recipient is Megan A. Glensky. Megan is achieving a Bachelor of Science honors in biology with a minor in chemistry, and a Bachelor of Arts honors in Spanish. Both degrees are summa cum laude. Our awardee is also recognized this year as the outstanding Spanish major and is a scholar athlete in cross country and track. Already versed in teaching science to elementary kids through Gonzaga's Science in Action Honors Program, Megan plans to serve in the Peace Corps as a high school science teacher in Guinea, and then pursue a career teaching English in a Spanish-speaking country. Congratulations, Megan. Today's honoree has served in many leadership roles to help protect the rights of Native Americans, addressing issues ranging from climate change responses to sovereignty issues. She has followed in the footsteps of tribal leaders who dedicated themselves to improving lives of those who called the Quinault Indian Nation their community. In carrying forward this work, and in true collaboration with leaders of Washington State, she has helped to guide to build the economy of the Grays Harbor region, while protecting and restoring the natural environment of the Olympic Peninsula. President Fawn Sharp graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from Gonzaga University and a Juris Doctorate from the University of Washington, and has achieved certificates from the National Judicial College in Nevada, as well as the International Human Rights Law from Oxford University. She conducts lectures across the United States and writes publications to contribute to the education of others. For her commitment to bringing hope and promise to the Quinault people, and all Indian nations, Gonzaga is grateful and proud to honor our sister Fawn Sharp on this day with a degree, Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Congratulations and thank you for addressing the class of 2020. Oak Yuhuch, class of 2020. Anstrak Haiwishka, Siokwil. On behalf of the entire Gonzaga community, congratulations. We are so incredibly happy for you in this milestone and accomplishment. And to the friends 
family, mentors, teachers throughout your lifetime, we also raise our hands and congratulate you as well. We all recognize that individually we are nothing, but with our friends, our family, our teachers, our mentors, our heroes, and our, our, our almighty creator, nothing is impossible and we can accomplish anything that we set our minds to. So our hands are raised. You did it, you made it, congratulations. Now I wanna offer just a few remarks in preparation as you enter that next chapter of your life and that next chapter of service. We all know we are living during unprecedented times. And I would urge you to really consider this moment in time. What we are all facing, we are facing many apocalyptic challenges on many levels. And it's very clear that our creator called us. We are strong, we are prepared, and we are destined for this moment. What we see in the world around us is an incredible imbalance. It's an imbalance that didn't begin just last year or even a decade ago or even a lifetime ago. The imbalance that we see throughout our world began centuries ago. If you just look at the world around us, the things that we see with regard to our natural world, our climate, when you look at the social and racial inequities and injustices facing this generation, and when you look at a global pandemic, all of these are symptoms of a much deeper imbalance in our lifetime. But like those who've gone before us, your grandparents, your great grandparents, who faced the Great Depression, who faced the civil rights eras, and who faced many health care crises and public health care crises, we too are prepared. And we cannot forget that the strength, the resilience, and the resolve that went through their veins during those times, that strengthened them, that provided that fortitude, it's the same thing that runs through your veins. You inherited that legacy of strength. You inherited that legacy of resilience. And you are called upon at this time to face even greater challenges. And together, and with our almighty creator's blessing, grace, and guidance, we too are gonna face these challenges. I also want you to consider not only the world around you, but I want you to consider deep within your heart and within your spirit. That vision, those dreams that you had as a young child. None of us could ever have imagined that the world that we face now was something that we would be destined to do. We all, when we envisioned our future as children, had dreams of big ideas and hopes and, and things that we wanted to accomplish in a very positive way but we are facing some dark times. None of us could have ever imagined the darkness that we are now facing. But like those who've gone before us, we have to recognize that in adversity, there's opportunity. In adversity, there are challenges, and we are well equipped to meet those challenges. So look at, at your life, look at your family, look at the generations that have gone before you, draw upon that strength, because that is what you're destined to do. And as you look around and, and you look at that history and you look at your family and you look at those dreams and those things that stand before you, also recognize that you have a purpose. We all have a unique destiny and purpose that our almighty creator has called us to do. And as long as we pay close attention to what we are called upon to do, we all have a perfect plan, a perfect path, and a perfect timing. And we have to enter life in a way that's respectful. Respectful of all those who are around us and respectful of that future that we know is so bright. And as you look at the world around you, and as you look at those that have gone before you, and as you dig deep and look at the hopes and dreams that you had as a young child, know that you are prepared and destined to face these times. We know that this country is facing some incredible challenges, public health challenges, economic challenges, and economic crises, and many are questioning whether this country can stand on those principles and values upon which it was built. We know that there was a president at one time that challenged this country. Can a nation so conceived and so dedicated long endure? Our country is being tested. There's a great deal of division, but we have to recognize that while there's tremendous division in this country, there is so much more that draws us together. There is so much more 
that is our common denominator, that is the force of our strength, that can make us that country that those around the world look to with hope, with optimism. And we know that our generation, while we are facing much, we are given much, and we have deep hopes and we have dreams that exceed anything that we could possibly imagine. And as long as we are true to those values, as long as we are true to our traditions and the, the values that our beloved Gonzaga University is built upon, we know that we are being trained to face something that is much greater than us. It's much greater than our generation. But we are here and we are ready to support you. We are ready to celebrate your success. This is the day, the moment, and the time. You've worked your entire life to prepare. Many have invested hours, days, years into your success. And we know that this is a moment that you can seize you can stand on that solid foundation of those that have gone before you, your hopes, your dreams, and all those that have paved the way for you. And now is the time to embrace it, to rise above all of the darkness that this world faces and see that, that beacon of light and hope that stands for all of us. We must seize this moment. We must rise to the challenge. And I'm confident that we have prepared you, that Gonzaga has prepared you to meet these challenges. So this is your moment. Seize upon that legacy of strength. Seize upon that legacy of resilience. And seize the moment. Rise, soar, and meet today's challenges. See you quill. Each year, the senior class chooses a member to speak on its behalf to the commencement audience. This year's speaker is on a path to becoming a journalist with a desire to report on the lives of immigrants and immigration at large. She achieved a Bachelor of Arts majoring in journalism with minors in writing and political science from Gonzaga University. And she is now attending graduate school at Columbia University. Please welcome Arcelia Martin. Family, friends, faculty, and staff, it is such an honor to be with you this morning. And to the class of 2020, congratulations. We did it. Usually at events like these, there is a sense of anticipation. Graduations celebrate the end of what we've come to know and the beginning of something different. But given our circumstances, many of us have already started new beginnings, in new spaces with new routines. And our transition from one chapter of our lives to the next was not seamless. It came amid an ongoing global health pandemic and our country facing a racial reckoning after the deaths of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and countless others. As I listened to the stories that rippled out of this season, I was reminded of a key tenant of my education at Gonzaga. Stories are powerful. I learned that the path to a richer life was one that is jam-packed, flowing over the top, filled with stories of all kinds. During my four years I spent at Gonzaga, most of my time was spent working at the Bulletin the student newspaper produced on the fourth floor of College Hall. This job opened my eyes to just a few of the infinite ways in which the human experience varies. These stories disrupt our predispositions. Stories unlike our own are vital. You don't have to travel far to find them. If you can, I would. But the diversity of the human experience surrounds us. Talk to your classmate, your neighbor. They have surely lived such a different path than you, but somehow have ended up in the same class, the same job, the same city. I know our parents have been telling us our entire lives not to talk to strangers, and I understand where they were coming from. I do. <laughs> but now, as graduates of Gonzaga University, people who believe that every person has infinite worth, and together we can create a more just and equitable world. 
Aren't we called to talk to people we don't know? Isn't it our mission to shed light on what it means to be human? You may think differently, pray differently, vote differently than whoever you're with, but you share personhood. We all share these moments of desire, heartbreak, hope, making us intrinsically more united than we're not. When I was a freshman, my first assignment for the newspaper was to write a story on a professor who had just received his citizenship after 25 years. His name is Father Patrick Barraza. When I sat down in his office, he told me about his grandfather's relationship with religion in Kenya, his first teaching experiences in Northern California, and how a VW bug led him to the priesthood. Those hours that I spent working on the story of Father Barraza's journey to citizenship changed the way I thought about meeting people outside of journalism. It made me question, how well do I know the people around me? And how do I get to know these people more authentically? My experience with Father Barraza, just one conversation between two people, helped me see that stories are how we connect with one another. And those connections, the hundreds, thousands that we make over our time as humans, add value to our lives. I began investing more time into more questions. Late at night, freshman year, I'd find myself begging my newly found friends for one more story about when they almost, when they did, or when they shouldn't have. <laughs> Their stories gave me a wider lens to look through. They were first shared in a CM study room, then on kitchen floors in the Logan neighborhood, and on nights when the dinner was done, but we stayed around the table, indulging in each other's company. And we made our own stories too. The zip line, the dancing, another road trip to Portland. What I love about stories is that if you let them, they can travel with you and keep people close. Even when everything around us shifts and is no longer recognizable, we'll have these stories to hold on to. The ones that make us feel a part of something, that remind us that we have been in it and are in it together. Like running at full speed throughout campus for tenting or 21st birthday celebrations at Jack and Dance, or our very successful senior boat dance. And we'll remember times like these, where we couldn't be with each other the way that we were used to, when we all found a new mode of flexibility when the world spun differently. It revealed that our most valuable assets are the connections that we have with one another. As we graduate into new classrooms, new cities, new opportunities, seek out the stories that make your worldview more abundant, that challenge you to think differently, that lead you toward love. If we continue to be curious and compassionate, we can continuously grow into the people we'd hoped we'd become when choosing Gonzaga for the first time all those seasons ago. Thank you to everyone who helped us become better Zags with richer lives. We are all so grateful. Congratulations to the graduating class of Gonzaga 2020. We're all so proud of you, and I know your parents are as well. We live in such an interesting time and challenging world, but that's why we have Zag Nation, because you're going to go out and face these challenges and help us meet them head on. So my heartfelt thanks and congratulations to all of you for such a fantastic achievement. Go Zags. What up Zags? Uh, we did it, congrats on graduating. Uh, I wish you all the best for the future and go Zags.
Hi, it's Gonzaga alum Bruce Huff, along with two of my children, Julianne and Derek. Hey everybody, congratulations. Um, just a few words of advice that have helped me in the past, and that is you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So just put yourself out there, be courageous, and don't forget to have fun and stay healthy. And even though you're graduating, continue to stay a student, stay curious, and don't lose that childlike wonderment, that creativity and curiosity. Always put people before things. Relationships will last forever. Congratulations to all of Congrats. you. Congrats, Great everybody. 2020 from Gonzaga. Hello, 2020 GU grads. Rick Clark here with Giving Backpacks and also a recent graduate from Gonzaga. I just want to extend a heartfelt congratulations to every single one of you guys. Welcome to the Bulldog family. I'm Mary Fairhurst. I'm a 1979 undergraduate and a 1984 law graduate of Gonzaga University. I am the former Chief Justice of the Washington State Supreme Court. I'm very happy to join you today as we celebrate your wonderful accomplishment. I have three pieces of advice. Make a difference, believe in miracles, and be the leaders the world needs most. Have a wonderful life. Congratulations, go Zags. Congratulations to the class of 2020 on making it to this big day. As you embark on your journey into the real world from Gonzaga, which has fostered commitment to dignity of the human person, social justice, and diversity, I wish you the best of luck with your futures and implementing those beliefs throughout your lives. All lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter. Go Zags. Hello to all the Zags out there and the class of 2020. It's Kathy McMorris Rogers wishing you a happy graduation day. We may be socially distant, but I'm always proud to say, go Zags. So congratulations. My mantra for 2020 is that the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Go invent it. Congratulations. Hey, it's Jimmy Kimmel and I wanna congratulate the class of 2020 at Gonzaga Univ... There's no Gonzaga Universe. Who did this? Gonzaga? No, it doesn't matter. You, it doesn't matter how you pronounce something that doesn't exist. Anyway, I don't know what's going on. If there are indeed students who think they are enrolled in this university, congratulations, I guess. To me, it's a hoax. Oh, Jimmy, give it a rest. Our alumni know that Gonzaga exists. Don't they, Spike? Congratulations to the class of 2020. As director of the work of the Society of Jesus at Gonzaga University, President McCullough will now mission the senior class, assisted by the Vice President for Mission and Ministry, Dr. Michelle Wheatley. In the Society of Jesus, when a Jesuit has been assigned to a particular role, or an important project, he has been missioned to do that work by the superior. Sometimes this act of missioning is ceremonially formalized. And in recent years, we have placed the act of your graduation in the Jesuit context of a mission. And so today, with the support of all those who have encouraged and supported you in your educational journey, we formally mission you. To you, our graduates of the class of 2020, our prayer for you is to go forth and to live the fullness of life, to appreciate along the way that the journey is as important as the destination, that trials endured do indeed make us stronger, that risks taken increase not only our chances of success, but our capacity to cope. That facing the unknown allows us to know ourselves more deeply. And that choosing to be fully alive creates life 
for everyone around us. On this day, we mission you to go forth and with your gifts, inspire the world. And we ask God's eternal blessing upon each of you. Amen. Thank you to the deans for their dedication to academic excellence and student success. The deans who support and host academic programs and services in support of the degrees we are conferring today include Dr. Jason Houston of the Satellite Campus, Gonzaga in Florence, Dr. Paul Brackey of the Foley Library Center, and Dr. Jacob Brooksby, Dean of the Gonzaga Law School. As we prepare for the conferral of degrees, let me introduce the academic deans who will host the next segment of today's program for each school. Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Anne-Marie Cagno. Dean of the School of Business Administration, Dr. Ken Anderson. Dean of the School of Education, Dr. Yolanda Gallardo. Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Dr. Carlene Hu. Dean of the School of Nursing and Human Physiology, Dr. Vince Salyers, represented today by Dr. Jane Teat, Professor of Nursing. I send thanks to the deans for their dedication to academic excellence and leadership in student success. To our students and guests, I ask that you please choose the school ceremonies listed on the website for the next segment of our commencement program and join your dean for a special tribute to your accomplishments. I will see you again at the close of your school or college segment.